So for the next talk, uh, I like to welcome Bernhard Schmidt onto the stage. And he's going to talk about component APIs and how to enforce them. So big round of applause for Bernhard, please. Yep. So hello, fellow Neosians, and welcome to my little rant, uh, I mean talk about uh, components, their APIs, and why component APIs are so important. Uh, I'm Bernhard. Um, in the NEOS community, I mostly work uh, on the event source content repository and especially the Postgres hypergraph projection. <laughs> but um, mainly, I, of course, work at Zeitgeist as software architect and backend developer. So, um, as you might know, um, most of the time uh, I don't work on NEOS but with NEOS, just like all of you. Which brings us to our topic today which is our beloved presentation layer, Fusion. Or I, as I would say, uh, the most sophisticated way to cast node interface to string that we currently have. So what is Fusion? I mean, you, you know it. I probably uh, I want to point out a few things uh, that are interesting for our architecture here. So Fusion is designed as some kind of glue code layer between domain and presentation. Domain being mostly on node types, which define the semantics and presentation, which is the HTML markup you have in your AFX, for example. It's component-based. That's extremely um, helpful, uh, especially for this case here. And it's already a great advantage over um, other templating engines we had in the past. Um, uh, that's what's really great about Fusion. So it's uh, by design as declarative as possible. So you, um, what you mainly try to do is uh, map something like a key to value, key to value, and be done with it. It's extremely flexible. So for example, um, uh, if, uh, if you uh, write a component, then you don't have to declare anything. So basically, you just pass around arrays of stuff. And um, imagine you would just shuffle all components all over the place. And Fusion would still r work and render something, most probably nothing uh, sensible, but um, it would still work. It has AOP style prototype override, so um, any package can override any other package's prototypes, which is extremely powerful, but also extremely dangerous. It uh, can implement logic uh, via eel helpers, those can range from easy date formatting, for example, to complex queries uh, to Elasticsearch, for example. And we have Flow Query, um, which is a kind of query builder that's usually uh, used to uh, query nodes. And there we have, uh, actually we have uh, one, um, one thing that I want to say is that maybe if your glue code layer starts querying all over the place, something might be off already. Uh, the language itself is closely modeled uh, after front-end technologies. Um, so you have uh, Flow Query, which is similar to jQuery. Um, the React prop types made it into the code base as Fusion prop types. And we have something similar to JSX, which is AFX. So um, any issues with that? What's not to like about this? Um, I've brought uh, one simple component with me. It's basically component zero, uh, because I had some issues with that component. What I, what I did was I used this uh, somewhere in the integration code. Um, I used an image, and that's basically what it does. It renders an image. And I set the width to some value, and it didn't work. And uh, so I, I looked uh, at the uh, source code. Is there something wrong in Kaleidoscope? Is there anything wrong in the uh, media library for Neos, um, and so on? And uh, after like half an hour of searching the code, what I found that uh, is that um, three layers upwards in another component, I had a typo in the word width, which isn't that hard to do because, um, I mean, width and height, they are words that, you, that scream, uh, please uh, put a typo in me. So. Um, and there's another thing. <laughs> there is props.class, right? Uh, this isn't declared above. And yeah, uh, passing classes as props isn't really that good of an e API either, because as an integrator, what I'm supposed to put in there? So the issue with arrays, right? Because that's our problem. We pass around arrays. 
So we don't have any guarantee what's in there, right? I mean, um, did I provide all the props that are necessary to properly render this component? Did I make any typos? Um, what type is actually required for each prop? And what props are available anyway? I don't know that. I have to look in the, in the rendering, actually. And uh, all these problems uh, cascade through at apply. That's what happened in my case. I defined some props, then I applied that to the next child component, and then it was applied to the next child component, and somewhere else in the rendering an error occurred. Uh, we don't have any IDE support for that, so if you want to add, um, uh, you want to render a component, you pass the parameters, you have to basically guess what parameters there are, you have to look up uh, in the API and so on. And we, uh, there's currently no um, possibility to statically analyze this, so if anything goes wrong, you'll uh, notice this when you render it, not before. And uh, so in general, arrays just don't make uh, good API specifications. So uh, as always in the Neo's uh, rendering layer, uh, what would JavaScript do in our case? I mean, most probably I, I haven't been the first person to run into this kind of issue. Um, what happens uh, are prop types. That's uh, a JavaScript concept. So um, you can declare the actual props of this component um, with type. Are they required? And you can set it to strict mode, which will just um, throw an error if you put anything else in. So um, we have a separate declaration of props, or basically the default values, and the prop types. Uh, we have runtime validation in um, so um, if th something's the wrong type or not given, uh, at least in the rendering, we get an error. And we are not uh, um, prone to parameter typos uh, in strict mode because of uh, runtime exceptions. So in my, s my case, that would uh, already have helped uh, because um, it would have said a uh, width or whatever way I, I wrote it uh, wasn't part of the API. Um, you, you, you are still prone to prop call error typos. So if in your rendering you have a typo, it still re will be reserved to empty string. And we still have no static analysis. So it basically states that there's something wrong, but it still doesn't say where you did it wrong. Because basically we're still a race. And um, at that uh, moment in time, um, I, I was already slightly annoyed. Um, I, uh, I found out uh, that uh, this array thing was our basic uh, problem. And I was like, OK, when writing the NEOS core, and especially the content repository, we have value objects and the like all over the place, so nothing can go wrong. And in my day job, I'm supposed to juggle around arrays? I don't think so. So what can we do? Um, what happened next in JavaScript, because you know what would JavaScript do? Uh, it was TypeScript. So they had actually a type safe language um, with objects and so on. And it's highly favored over prop types. And basically, as I heard, I mean, I'm a backend developer, no one uses prop types when you have TypeScript. So what do we do next? Type fusion. But, uh, before we uh, start um, uh, uh, talking about that, I'd like to take a step back. Because, I mean, if only we had a language, right? that adds type safety, static analysis, a wide range of IDE support and tooling in general, no maintenance to be done on our side, and that is already part of our um, NEOS ecosystem, that would be great, right? So let's uh, talk about the elephant in the room and how to address this properly. So I mean, we can, of, use, of course, use PHP um, a lot for this, but um, we don't want to just throw PHP at the problem, so let's um, have a short look at what we actually need for this. And our goal is uh, build magnetic puzzle pieces. I mean, uh, you saw that Azure puzzle at the beginning of the presentation. That's really nice in your free time, but you don't want to do something uh, like that if a time is uh, of the essence, right? So um, what is a component, actually? So um, it's replaceable. That's the main um, feature of components, right? So if you don't like it anymore, or if, or if you got a different speci specification, just throw it away, build a new one. Isolated. So um, for example, uh, a presentational component must never call some parent component or a node or something. Um, it just has to uh, 
be context independent, right? So they define an API that's important for replaceability because if you replace something, it would be nice what you need to provide in the new implementation. And um, also, um, yeah, that's, that's nice for analysis uh, later. We have integrational versus presentational components where the integrational are doing the mapping stuff and the uh, presentational components just render stuff. And uh, some special features of presentational components, so they are stupid. They don't have any logic besides some presentational stuff. And they should be reusable across semantic contexts, right? So for example, if you render that kind of teaser card, it doesn't really matter if, there, if there's a product or a new blog posting rendered here, right? So it can be used for both. Integration. Um, that's one thing we have to look at. So what is integration? So basically, we have semantics on the one hand, which might be a, 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 some kind of blog posting node type, or it might be a product entity coming from a web service or whatever. Then we have a presentational components that might be a, such a card with an image and headline and text, or it might be a stage at the beginning of the page with that big image and uh, some headline and so on. Then we have integration, which says, okay, I, I have this entity and I want to map it uh, to a component. And um, so semantics and presentation are completely um, uh, distinct, right? So um, a blog posting, for example, can be rendered either as a card or as a stage, uh, while the card might be rendered using a blog posting or a web page. So um, if you want to describe integration, so what is it? So it be, actually it's a function, right? You pass an entity in and you get a component out. Um, it should contain all the logic, right? So from um, querying stuff to formatting dates and so on, this should all happen in the integration part. It's deterministic, that's really interesting. So the moment you, you have a document node, you already know which components are to be rendered. There is no magic happening after that. Um, components, uh, especially presentational components, uh, should expect the data exactly as they need it, right? So that's the API. What the API is for? Um, the headline should be a string, right? No reason to put an image there. So um, we need a declaration of a strict component API so that we can be safe that the component gets all it needs. And uh, there is no, pres no such thing as a presentational logic except for conditions. I mean, you want that at if, for example, um, loops, um, delegation to child components, and string concatenation. And everything else should actually happen in the, in the integration part. And especially there, um, there are no domain entities involved anymore, especially no nodes, right? If you use your node in your presentational component, then your de presentational component depends on this node being there, and it's no longer a presentational component. So um, what can we do? We want something uh, type safe, and uh, we want to enforce this, so uh, we built a PHP class. Um, that's basically a very plain PHP object. Here in our example, we use 8.1, uh, which makes this class a lot, uh, let, let's say it fits on the screen, right? <laughs> because otherwise you had, would have all these properties and the large constructor and all the getters, and uh, that's all gone in, in 8.1. Um, they complement, or better, they actually they replace props, right? Instead of a props array, you now have this object. So it's, it's type safe, you can statically analyze it, you can unit test it, whatever you want. And it may only be composed of uh, primitives, uh, enums now in 8.1, for example, for variants instead of this class interface, right? Um, other components, and slots, which is a comp uh, concept I'll, um, I'll come to later. They should be immutable because uh, once I created this thing, no one else should be able to manipulate it as it is um, passed from component to component. And it cannot be called. That's a feature of this uh, abstract component presentation object. So if you do something like props.something and there's a typo, and then you will try to call this object if there is any magic function there. And if this uh, doesn't return anything, then you will just default to empty string. So if we override this call method, which I did, 
um, and just throw an invalid argument exception, then you have actual type safety even when you call props.something. So um, we have this object. So what does the component look like? Um, it's basically, it, it, and the rendering is basically very similar, right? We have a, a variant instead of this class attribute. But uh, besides of that, we just do presentation object dot something instead of props dot something. Um, all the API um, configuration or uh, declaration is actually in the PHP object. So um, thanks to Christian Fettes, um, uh, plugin, you just can click on the PHP class and you're there, and all the types and uh, prop names are readily available. So, um, yeah, you, you can just do that. Um, uh, what's important is that you, you have to declare this class, right? This PHP class, it has to exist. And if you want to render this thing, this object has to be um, passed as a variable. If this object isn't there or the object is not of the right type, it will throw a runtime error. Um, yeah, we had that with the, with the core stuff. And as you see, there are no special fusion features in here, right? Um, no this, no add context, no add process, or whatever. Because, um, as already said, it, this component needs all its data already uh, readily available. So this component API is enforced. So I, I really, uh, it, wasn't, uh, it was rather hard to find uh, um, a perspective from which this cute little PHP elephant looks intimidating. Uh, that's the best I came up with. So um, we still somehow have to instantiate this object, right? And um, you can't create a PHP object in Fusion. At least you could not uh, until the day before yesterday when Martin uh, pub published the um, Sidegast Rollup package. Now in PHP 8 you can. But uh, before that, and for other special cases, or the um, or most cases, I guess, um, you have to write some kind of factory, right? Um, and this factory is actually the function I talked uh, about earlier. You get some parameters, a node, and the are we in the backend or not, and we return the figure, which is our, um, yeah, our presentation object we need to render the component. So now um, we just um, we check, do we have an image? If yes, uh, use an image, uh, an asset image source from the kaleidoscope. If not, and we are in the back end, then use a dummy, Im dummy image source. And uh, if that still is not the case, then, for example, throw an exception, do something else, whatever you like. Then we return the object, and you're done. <laughs> so um, the character of this is actually functional. I mean, it's a factory class in Flow because we need dependency injection for some things. Um, but the idea is that just it's just parameter in, parameter out. We have variables. Um, I mean, it's PHP, of course, we have them. Um, if you tried this in Fusion with uh, this and at context and the combination of this and context, uh, you will um, soon, um, you s soon see that this uh, gets uh, problematic all, the, all of the time. So uh, having actual variables is really, really great. Um, this is statically analyzable, right? Um, uh, if you do anything wrong here, uh, I mean, you can't uh, possibly do typos, but um, if you do F uh, something uh, syntactically wrong, uh, then your IDE will scream in your face, and if you like use a regular text editor, uh, at least uh, PHP Stan will scream in your face. And it's actually it's quite easily testable with PHP unit, right? It's just node in, something out. So what does the integration component look like? Um, it's just um, basically, yeah, we, we have, um, it's, it's a content component we want because we want the wrapping. Uh, then we render our uh, presentational component and assign a presentation object that we create with this factory, which is registered as an eel helper. So we have direct delegation to the component. Nothing else is happening here. And all logic happens in the factory. So this is, was basically the release of presentation objects one. So let's have a quick um, uh, look at this. So we have a rather verbose code base, actually, because PHP 7.3 was the thing to go back then. Um, with all these large classes, we also had interfaces for that, and so on. Uh, we could eliminate uh, complete classes of errors, right? You can't um, do anything wrong in integration. I mean, you can, of course, use the wrong um, uh, component, for example, but that uh, is something you don't do by accident. Um, 
Yeah, we have a language switch, which is rather nasty. I mean, you start in Fusion, then you switch to PHP, which renders the component or creates the object, and then we go back to Fusion and render it. That's uh, not so nice. Um, and um, uh, if we look at the integration, it's always the same pattern, right? You have the, uh, com you have the content component, and you just render one, um, one presentation component, and you're done. And uh, this is created by the factory, and this pattern is all over the place for all your uh, integration components. So we have to wrap some things like cache or wrapping um, for editables. We had to do this manually. That wasn't nice either. And which uh, leads me to the next point how to do editable in uh, PHP components. So um, the original problem is, I mean, we can't have nodes as properties in our, um, in our components, right? Because now we do not want that. But how do we do a, a content element wrapping without a node? That doesn't work, right? So um, the first thing we tried is um, we have self-wrapping components where we assign some function containing that node, which could then wrap, uh, could be applied with a process wrap and just apply the function. And um, that was, it kind of worked, but it wasn't nice either. Then Wilhelm came up with an idea, and this idea is slots. So what is a slot? So it's basically just a fusion prototype, and um, you have to assign it um, a presentation object of type slot which basically means um, it, ha it ha has to um, have two properties, right? It has, to um, it has to define which prototype is to be rendered, so, um, and it has to implement the interface required by that prototype. So you can encapsulate basically everything. So what kind of, of slot types have we? We have uh, value, which is basically a glorified string, right? Here is a string you... Um, you just uh, render as a value slot. Then you have editable, and this is getting interesting. Editable needs a node, a property name, and then can be put into a slot. And it's interchangeable with, um, with value, for example, right? So you have a presentational component, like a text, for example, and the actual text content is a slot. And you can, can put in either value, for example, if this, it doesn't come from a node, from, uh, f but from a label, for example, or you put in editable if it's an editable node property, and you can still use the same component. Uh, we have the content slot for nodes, and this will just be uh, then again delegated to content case. Uh, we have a collection for iterables, so you can also um, uh, put an array of, of slots in there. And uh, in version 4, there will be cache segments, but you can implement them uh, today as well. And one thing that's interesting, that's the second exclamation mark here, all presentation objects um, know their prototype name because the prototype name in Fusion is, uh, can be translated to the PHP object's fully qualified name and vice versa. Um, so we, um, this is our example, right? We have this text component with some wrapping diff, and then we just render the slot, which can be either editable or just a plain value. Um, the object would be just yeah, a class text, which just has this slot interface as content property. And um, here, for example, we have the factory, right? So we can have a value slot uh, for, um, for some, uh, let's say, the manufacturer part number from a product. Or we can, an editable, uh, can have an editable slot uh, for a blog, blog, blog postings headline, for example. So consequences for integration. Um, we already know that integration components, they just delegate stuff to their presentational com component. And slots accept any presentation object. So can we combine this? Um, yes, we can. So we say goodbye to integration components and say hello to the content slot factory. So what do we have to do? We just take the content collection renderer, right? Because this does this case stuff and then renders a prototype that matches the node type name. Uh, and we just say, OK, um, we always know this uh, must be a content component for the wrapping. And inside that comp content component, as we already um, found out, uh, we just need a slot, right? And um, in that slot, uh, we put any presentation object this content slot factory creates for the given node. Uh, you just have to declare this once. And from then on, no more uh, integrational components, but uh, just, uh, let, let's say, a root factory like this, right? You just get uh, the content node in. And there you have the switch case, switch presentation object to create. Um, 
Yeah, exactly. So um, for a text node, we create a text. For an image node, we create a figure, for example. We can use the factor, uh, figure factory from before, for example. No problem here. And then you're done. So observations. So integration now can be done. Type self, statically analyzable and testable, right? It's all in plain, simple PHP. We still have two blind spots. A node get property is an issue because we don't know what's in there because property of a node are an array. Um, and uh, presentation object dot prop is still a problem because um, it cannot be statically analyzable, right? It will throw a runtime error if you type something wrong, but you will still not know before rendering. Uh, you can actually debug your stuff via Vardump. That's really, really nice because you can just do that in your factory. You can still have resource co-location with PSR4, so your PHP file will uh, reside uh, directly next to your Fusion file. Refactoring is a little bit more complex, but it's also safe. So, you, I mean, before you could just say, okay, I use another prop in my rendering and you're done, and if there's nothing given it, um, provided, then empty string, right? Um, uh, but now you have to extend this. Um, uh, you have to um, add another property to the PHP class, and then you have to look, so, okay, where is this instantiated? And, um, but uh, in this, uh, this way, you won't miss any spot um, where to put data in, right? And if you missed such a spot, uh, PHP stand will notify you, right? So here's a missing parameter, and then you can think about, okay, this new prop of the presentation object, what uh, do I put in in this case? So factories provide an index, right? So you, um, if, for example, if you have a figure factory, then you can see, okay, these are all the cases where figures are instantiated. That's really nice. And we still have the language switch, right? But we have one switch less. So we start integration basically in PHP and then switch over to Fusion just for the AFX rendering. Uh, we have a paradigm switch that's basically most, uh, the largest problem, I guess, So because we, uh, before we at least tried to be as declarative as possible, now we are um, imperative or even functional, right? We have a more verbose code, code base, especially before PHP 8.1. Um, it's still to be seen if in PHP 8.1 actually you have to write less PHP than you had to write Fusion before. That will be interesting. And back then, uh, we compensated this by using a Kickstarter. Because the nice thing is, uh, if you know a component's API, uh, this is all, uh, the same all over the place, right? It's the same in PHP as in the Fusion um, renderer. So we just can say, okay, we kickstart a new card object, um, and it has a headline, which is another component we already kickstarted before. Then we say, okay, we want a Kaleidoscope image source, and perhaps a, a headline, and that's most probably a slot, right? So we wait a few seconds and um, it generates all the re uh, required files for that. Um, and uh, yeah, we start with the Fusion file. There's a, yeah, it's, it's basically a readily available uh, Fusion prototype. Just throw a little um, tailwind at it and you're done. At least that's what I think as a back backend guy. Um, it kickstarts our object and an empty factory because, well, um, integration is that what you still have to do yourself. Okay, further observations. Hmm. Okay. Um, at least I thought there were some. Um, so, um, um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, then it seems like I lost that slide. But, um, um, so what c can we still see? Um, yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm <laughs> I guess I have to skip that. <laughs> so, um, uh, th there's, there's actually one thing uh, that's still going on is that um, what, what's, uh, what about the um, integrational part? Um, can we ca somehow keep that uh, for integrators? And which is uh, basically our synthesis. So we had the, uh, our thesis, which is, oh, well, uh, there it is, okay. Uh, i try this again. Okay, so, um, uh, using this approach, okay, that's that's actually a more um, a very interesting uh, thing I found out. 
um, at least I um, uh, developed a much better understanding for what a component actually is, what it does, and what it does not. I mean, most of, uh, of what we do here, like um, separating integration and presentation in such a rather strict way, you can do this in plain fusion as well, uh, but this architecture enforces that you do that. Naming things is uh, more important than ever, right? You have this figure image thing, that's my favorite. So uh, on the semantic part, it's an image, right? You can say in schema org, this is an image. And it's nice if your presentation does not have the same name, so otherwise you just mix it up all the time. So we decided to go for image for the semantic part and, and in the presentational part, it's just figure. Um, the, more these uh, co uh, the more complex these component structures get with all the child components and so on, uh, the more we benefit from this approach because, you know, this at apply cascade just doesn't happen anymore. Um, it's really straightforward, right? Um, you have one single entry point, and for there you create all the objects, you give it to the renderer, and you're done. So there is uh, no one interfering with that from the outside. And um, these components age very well. That's something I found out over the last four years that I use it now. Um, because, my, I mean, it was super easy to change components in the past, right? You just add another prop, and you're done. But if you cannot do this easily, um, you also tend to think about what you're actually doing. Do we actually perhaps need a new component? Um, um, so um, yeah, this uh, actually goes uh, very well then. So um, should you use it? <laughs> so that's um, the, uh, the typical answer, it depends, right? So. Um, uh, I personally use it for all my presentation components. Um, it might be, uh, I mean, it's for, mon so for some components, it's more usable than for others. Um, for example, for complex components who do Elasticsearch queries um, or, uh, or the, that did the Elasticsearch queries before, um, these factories come in very handy because Elasticsearch in PHP works, uh, in my opinion, far better than in Fusion. And, um, but it's also non-invasive, so you can actually just install the package and um, it, it won't break anything because it doesn't touch the props array. It can even be combined with props. So um, if you have something like that, uh, you could just check it out. There's one thing where I would not recommend it. It's um, basically in the name. Um, if you're still developing a prototype, so if you're just prototyping a customer object, a project, you don't um, yet know what components you need and so on, then perhaps plain fusion and um, monocle are your friend. So the synth synthesis, right? We, we had the, um, uh, the thesis, which is plain fusion. We had the antithesis, which is presentation objects. Where do we go from here? So I mean, what all that's left is simple PHP code and AFX templates. So do we really need fusion for that? <laughs> Um, then um, can we somehow have the best of both worlds? Why, I mean, if you have simple components like just mapping node type properties to a component, that's really nice in Fusion. Can we perhaps keep that? And which comes to the point, who integrates the integrators, right? We still have to, um, uh, have to cope for their requirements because they're not only uh, really um, enthusiastic PHP developers out there, there are also re really enthusiastic Fusion developers out there. And if you recognize these two guys and know that they work at the same company, um, then you might uh, imagine that there has been one or the other um, discussion going on on this. So what can we do, possibly in the future? Currently, I mean, we still have Fusion at the base. AFX is rendered to Fusion. Presentation objects use Fusion to render themselves. Uh, can we perhaps uh, switch to something where you just write AFX or simple integration components? They are rendered, then uh, transpiled to presentation objects and factories, and uh, basically perhaps the presentation components can even render themselves. That would be an idea. Let's see how, um, how we get there, and that's an interesting topic for the uh, following year, I guess. So um, from here, that's it for today. Um, there's this nice little package available. 
Um, currently at version 3 uh, for PHP 7.4, including the Kickstarter. Version 4 for PHP 8.1 is in preparation. I basically, uh, basically I just uh, wait for, the, um, for my next project that I can run under PHP 8.1, and that then it will be done. And yeah, that's it from me today. Uh, thanks for your attention, and um, let's see if there are any questions, <laughs> and if we have still time for them. much, Bernhard. Thanks very much. Awesome talk. So you also get your present right now. <coughs> oh. Oh. We forgot it again. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> but we hope you like gin. Yeah, well, uh, I think I can make use of that, yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, thanks again for te uh, uh, to Tech Division for sponsoring this. Oh, thanks a lot. And yeah, thanks again, Bernhard, for your great talk. Yeah, great.